There are many families with little children that need help with child care costs so that they can work. Bishop Matano and the Diocesan Public Policy Committee are asking us to join with them, calling on Governor Cuomo to increase state funding for child care subsidies. We are asking you to take a moment today to sign the letter which you have been given as you enter the church. Please hand it to one of the young people, or Father Steve, Deacon Dan, and myself, when you leave church today. Thank you for doing this. Other information on upcoming events can be found in this week's bulletin or on the church's website, which is updated weekly. There's a custom in our parish that at the end of the final hymn, we all kneel, silently saying three Hail Marys for the next one among us called Home by God. Now we ask you to check your cell phone to make sure it's silent. We invite you to take a moment of silence now as we prepare our hearts and minds enter this time of praise and worship.
Lord Jesus, who bring pardon and peace to the sinner, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, who bring light to those in darkness, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
I will lead them to brooks of water on a level road, so that none shall stumble. <coughs> For I am the father to Israel, Ephraim is my firstborn. The word of the Lord. Just as he says in another place, 
you are priests forever, according to the order of the Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Gospel of the Lord. Bartimaeus says, I want to see. 
Now, there are other translations that say, I want to regain my sight. So we don't know if Bartimaeus is one of those who was born blind or lost his sight somewhere along the way. But again, think about how courageous that is to ask for sight. Especially if you've been blind for any amount of time, things change. People around you will look different than they did when you lost your sight. You yourself will look different. Your reflection will not be what you expect. All the settings around you may have changed. And so it's a very difficult thing that Barnabas is asking. Lord, I want to see. I'm willing to take that risk. I want to move forward in my life. The other thing that really makes that such a profound request is that whenever we hear about seeing or sight or light in the Gospels, we're also talking about spiritual sight. Not just physical, but that spiritual eye of the heart, so to speak. And that's where the real sticky part of life comes in. Because if our spiritual eyes are open, we can't be comfortable anymore with turning the channel on the TV when bad news comes on. We can no longer ignore the fact that there are people around the world who are starving, including our own country. We can't ignore the fact that there is war and death. We can no longer ignore the fact that here in the United States, way too many people are dying through mass shootings and abortion, the death penalty, and assisted suicide. We can't ignore the fact that children in our own country go to bed hungry every night. But yet, that's what it means to be a disciple of Christ. To have the courage to ask that question. To say, Jesus, I want to see as you see. Now there's a positive side to that as well. Because when our eyes are truly opened, we can see God in work. We can see the beauty of life. Or the birth of a child. Of people willing to help those in need. Those willing to stand in harm's way to protect others. <coughs> we can see that God is active and alive and working in our world. And there's beauty in that. But again, it's a risky thing to ask. To say, God, I want to see. Something interesting in this gospel as well is the name of the man who is blind. <coughs> Bartimaeus. And it says right in the scripture, that means the son of Timaeus. So Mark, the author of the gospel, really doesn't identify who this person is. Meaning he could be no one, or more likely, he's everyone. He's us. We're the ones with the blindness and needs to be cured. And we're the ones that need to dig down deep and find the courage to say, Lord, take that away. <coughs> We're here because we're disciples. Whether we want to be or not, we are disciples of Christ. And so we need to ask that question. We need to say, Lord, help me to see. Help me to see as you see. Help me to see the person next to me as beloved by you and created by the Father. And there's one other part of this gospel that I really want to touch on, especially since today is World Youth Sunday. Now, admittedly, I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. But there's a phrase in here. Take courage. Get up. Jesus is calling you. And I want to address this to our youth especially. I mean, God calls all of us every day. But a lot of us have already made most of our life choices and our path is somewhat set. But to you, the youth, everything is open. Everything's a possibility. And so we need, we need you to be listening for God's call. To hear what it is God wants you to do with your life. Whether it be married life, a single life, ordained, a life of service, a particular job, whatever it is. We need you to listen and hear God tell you to whatever it is 
that he has planned for you. Because by listening to that call and answering, you're going to make us a better people. We're going to be stronger as a church, as a nation, as a world. Because you've heard God in the way that he wants you to answer. But again, like I say, that's true for all of us. Every day God looks at us and says, I have something I want you to do for me today. But if we're not listening, we're not going to hear that. And so we need to carve out a little piece of our day every day to be silent, to pray and to listen for an answer. This sounds like a very daunting task to hear God and to answer his call. But just remember what it said. Take courage. Get up. Jesus is calling. <coughs>
Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending us Jesus Christ, your only Son, the Savior of the world. Help us always to grow in love and service to one another and grant all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For our presentation song this morning, sing You Are Mine 649, 649 in the Green Gather Boat.
pay my brothers and sisters. My sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and all the souls of the church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. <coughs> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for the children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners. And he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father, and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name, and sing the hymn of the glory as without end we acclaim.
inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and St. Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
successful campaign we just finished to raise our annual donations. Our prayers were answered. We're still tabling the final data from our consultant, but what is important is everyone continue to honor your pledge and help us maintain uh, the, the level of giving that we need to run the parishes. Attendance was very good this summer, but it appears to be lighting up in the cooler weather. We all need to encourage non-participating run participating registered communicants of our community to get involved with spiritually and financial assistance. We also need to continue to encourage our family and friends to look at St. Mary's and St. Benedict's as a place they want to worship the Lord. Let's review where we are now. Churches and grounds of both parishes look good inside and out. We have made many improvements in the past two years. We already are looking at some improvements we need to get, get completed that we're not on the last restoration list. That's an ongoing process. These old buildings need work all the time. Cemeteries look good and are well maintained. We all share and receive in the benefits of our faith participation with communicants requesting baptism, first communion, and confirmation of their children, joining our families in the sacrament of marriage, and celebrating our departed loved ones' lives in the requiem of high mass of burial. It seems like we've had a lot of those lately. In a lifetime of rejoicing in the receipt of God's free gifts daily, including and most importantly, receiving his body and blood in Holy Communion. We house the food bank here at St. Mary's Center and financially support them by tithing a portion of our collection as part of our mission in the community. We unfortunately did reduce our contribution this year to prepare a balanced budget. Both parishes have volunteers and do modest fundraising. Of course, we only have one major fundraiser left here at St. Mary's, and that's our bazaar coming up on November 14th. If you have any ideas for new fundraisers or want to reinstate the cake booth at the Italian American Festival, please call the office. We are blessed, though. We, we have modest capital reserves and savings in both churches. Our obligations, payroll and benefits, you're going to get a handout in today's bulletin with pie charts on the front and back of, of both St. Mary's and St. Benedict's showing our income and our expenses. And salary and benefits is the highest part of our expenses, but it's all relative. We have a basically a small business, and a small business that doesn't make widgets, that doesn't have machinery and, and materials to buy, your biggest expense is your salary and benefits. We only have six people employed at the church, both full and part-time. We've made cutbacks in some of the staffing, and I, I personally don't believe we're over uh, hiring to get the work done that we need to do here in, the, in, the, in our mission. Utilities, we just completed work on our boilers and electrical system, including new lighting to decrease our uh, routine costs. Building maintenance and insurance on property, staff is constantly looking at ways to generate savings and, and uh, joint purchases, deductibles, et cetera, to help save money for the church. The diocese of mandates and requests. Those are important to the goals of our Holy Father, Bishop Latano, to bring God's word to the diocese and people all around the world. Catholic Courier. It is our main source of communication with the diocese and beyond. The parish subsidy for Catholic schools and poor parish building funds. It's our Christian mission. There's a handout in today's bulletin showing how we did this past fiscal year, which I referred to a minute ago. 
I'm not going to go through the budget numbers except to say the new fiscal year budget shows significant efforts to save money by reducing our anticipated expenses. In this day and age, when municipalities have a tax cap set by the governor, we're showing a reduced budget next year. We're not doing a 2% increase, we're doing a 2% decrease. Further, how grateful Father Steve and the Community's Finance Council is that you responded so positively to the annual donation campaign led by Kaneen, which I started off my remarks with. I'll brief briefly review the major statistics. The results of the campaign of St. Benedict's increased pledge donations by 13.5%, which is about $127 a week. St. Mary's has a 40% pledge increase, with donations increasing about $1,700 per weekend. This is amazing, and we thank you, and we encourage you to continue with your, with your pledge. The increases will help us overcome last year's deficit in collections through June 30th of 15, which resulted in a deficit of $103,600 in St. Mary's and over $12,000 in St. Benedict's. Most concerning, as I mentioned before, is our mass attendance numbers have decreased overall, although our summers still look good. Staff saved over $30,000 in budgeted expenses last year to help us deal with the deficits, and our proposed budget this year is over $31,000 less than last year's budget. It's important we do not use our reserves for routine budget expenses. If we do, one day we will not have these funds for a rainy day or a boiler that blows up or whatever we have. It's important that we not pay routine expenses out of our reserves. We are in the middle of the Catholic Ministries Appeal, the CMA. This is another obligation of the Scholar Catholic community. When we get the notice of what our goals are from the diocese, St. Mary's and St. Benedict's pay those goals whether we receive the pledges and donations from the communicants or not. So please be as generous as you can and help Father make his commitment to match our uh, donations and make sure we get deep in his pockets. And finally, if you need an envelope for that CMA and you didn't get one in the mail like I did, I grabbed one on the back, uh, back uh, table in the back of the church. Please pray for God's blessings and help to increase participation and income in our churches. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. 